let's look at Tuesday. There are 10 games on. It is the NBA Cup. We're going to look at um, injuries. We're going to look at streaming options. We're going to see what's on my radar. And we are going to put a Miami Heat center. There's only one of them. It's Bam Adebayo. He's going to go under the lens, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I see that you've played Knifey Spoonie before. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. So we're looking ahead. It's Tuesday. It's a big Tuesday with 10 games on. Borderline for streaming. When I did the weekly preview, we excluded this from streaming. Exclude it. That's the word. Exclude it from streaming. But you might be able to do it. Yesterday, I realized on the recap show that I said that I was going to give you an update on the um, industry pickup league uh, results. And I didn't. So I apologize. So I'll tell you what they are now. I was against Dan Titus and I beat him 8-1. I actually won turnovers. Somehow, even though I punted them, you can do it. I think I've won two out of three in turnovers. Um, he had a, a mishap early in the week where he forgot to start some players and was down six games. I still won turnovers even though I played six more games. But I got the victory there and I shoot to number one in the standings. Don't know if it stays there, but I'm happy. Drew Dinkmeyer beat Noah Rubin 5-4. Uh, Rhett Bauer beat Adam King 5-4. Mitch Casey beat Mike Barner, 5-4. Man, so many 5-4s in this league. Alex Reclean beat Alex Barutha, a battle of the Roto-Wire Alexes. Reclean wins at 6-3. And then B-Dub from FBI beat Mike Catron from watching the boxes, 5-4. So, a lot of 5-4s plus my uh, big fella, 8-1. So the standings puts me on top. Then it's uh, two and a half games ahead of B-Dub. Then Reclean, Drew Dinkmeyer, Rhett Bauer, Adam King, Mitch Casey, Noah Rubin, Mike Catron, um, Alex Barutha, Mike Barner, and Dan Titus. That's how the standings are shaping up at the moment in industry pickup. So what we're going to do today is what we always do on this show and, and go through and look at some injury updates across the NBA. And we'll start um, just by the, all the guys that currently are listed out. I believe there's been, since I created this show, there's been a little bit of uh, some updates on some guys. Oh my God, what the hell? All right, an update just came through on something else. Um, a whole bunch of stuff happened um, that I don't have listed. Ben Simmons has been ruled out. Larry Nance is out with a rib fracture. Okay, Jalen Duran's out for Tuesday. Nick Batum, after starting last game and playing 33 minutes, he's out for personal reasons. That shakes everything up. That means oh, Covington is going to have to start unless they start Daniel House. Uh, yeah, Covington is um, on the menu for that. That He has to. Who else is going to start? Maybe they do start house. Uh, maybe KJ Martin gets in the mix. Uh, that, that mucks things up a lot. All right, so that, that, that just all came through. Sorry. So Nick Batum out, Duran out, Larry Nance out, Ben Simmons out, that I don't have listed here. Miles Bridges is out, final game of his suspension. Terry Rogier is out. I'm going to guess that Caleb Martin is out. There's been no update, but I'm expecting that he is out. Um, Joe Harris is out. Monte Morris is out. Boyan Bogdanovich is out. We just got an update, actually, that Kenrich Williams is available to play for his first game of the season as well. The NBA, man, the news moves so quickly. You try and do something and do a show, and then five minutes later, everything changes. Uh, apologies. Markel Fultz and Gary Harris are out. That is not great news for Markel Fultz. Obviously, with Harris, we expect this. This does bring Black Anthony into play, but Suggs is still the preference there in terms of streaming. Wendell Carter remains out. I take Wagner over Goga, but they're bit pretty close. For the Pelicans, McCullum, Murphy, Alvarado all remain sidelined. Um, now, of course, Larry Nance is part of that mixed at sideline. That puts Jeremiah Robinson Earl into the streaming mix and, or at least into the deeper league mix and Cody Zeller into deeper league scenarios there as well. Some other injuries to report on. Scoot Henderson's out. Malcolm Brogdon's out. Anthony Simons is out. Walker Kessler is out. Jamal Murray is out. 
Ja Morant is out. Most of those are long-term injuries, but I'm just going to mention them here anyway. And we go into the next page of injuries. Gabe Vinson is out. Brandon Miller, is he was questionable. He is now upgraded to probable, so he's likely to play for the Hornets. I had Jalen Duran there. questionable with no update. He is out. Trey Jones, we don't have that update coming through on Trey, so he missed last game with a hamstring injury. Ben Simmons is out, and I don't believe I've got a Herb. Oh, Herb Jones is officially questionable now as well, so we do have that update there on Herbalife Jones for Tuesday. LeBron is um, not yet official, but I'm listing him questionable for now. We've got Jared Vanderbilt, who I don't think plays, but I'm going to list him questionable for the time being. Ex Avia T. Ilman, no update on him yet. We'll list him questionable at this point. And the other one is Musa Diabete for the Clippers, who did leave the last game, didn't return. We don't have really an, in- an injury update on what's going on with him. The other one who got added to the injury report, but I believe, you know, this is this one, Trey, Trey Young for the Hawks is questionable for personal reasons. I believe that his partner is expecting a baby. So if she has the baby, then he won't play. That will bump uh, a lot to DeJounte Murray. It will bump a lot to Bogdan Bogdanovich, and it will mean AJ Griffin has to be a part of the rotation because Kobe Bufkin can't. Oh, Wes Matthews plays a little bit more as well, but they they need somebody. Who, who's going to handle the ball? Like, Well, it's going to have to be Bogdanovich and Murray, isn't it? Because otherwise it's Paddy Mills, maybe, if Trey is out. So that's something to, um, something to watch there. With that also, so just a a bunch of injury news plus the millions that just got chucked in there with the biggest one that I haven't listed on on the graphic there, Jalen Duran out and Nick Batum out. The Batum money is really, really interesting. So um, let's look at who's just quickly, just so you've got a scope of where things sit for Tuesday and Wednesday. There are seven teams that play back-to-backs Tuesday, Wednesday. Remember, Tuesday is the first of the in-season tournament. The Atlanta Hawks, the Dallas Mavericks, you always want Luka watch for... Back-to-backs, he should be okay, but we watch that one. The Lakers, uh, I expect that Davis plays, but you never know. And LeBron being questionable, I would say he doesn't play both of these games. For the Timberwolves, we're pretty okay there. The Magic, well, the guys who we'd be worried about would be Gary Harris and, and John Isaac, of course. Uh, Harris is already out, and Isaac will probably sit one of those. For Philadelphia, no real concerns there. And for Portland also, I don't think we have any real concern in terms of um, in terms of guys sitting on that back-to-back. Today's episode is brought to you by Ibotta. Turkey is great, but we all know that the best part of Thanksgiving dinner dinner is the sides. And with Ibotta, you can make sure that you get the whole family's favorite side dishes and the turkey all while getting yourself cash back. And you know how you do it? Well, because of what Ibotta does. It gives you cash back on your purchases from grocery stores. 100% cash back starting in November, because we're here, it's November. So 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving feast. Just add the offers in the app to redeem for everything that you need to make your Thanksgiving feast complete. All you have to do is shop at your favorite retailers and upload your receipt. You can also earn cash back on hundreds of other online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. So download the Ibotta app now and use the code LOCK to get 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving dinner starting on November 1st. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use the code LOCKED. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play or the App Store and use the code LOCKED. All right, so that is, um, that's going to bring us to the Under the Lens segment. We're talking about Idris Bam Adebayo. Because Bam has been absolutely flying of late. Bam's numbers. Let's see what he's been doing over the last week. And again, what we do, I'm not going to, this is the last time I'm going to explain this. When we do under the lens, it's who is the player who has either risen the most or dropped the most over the last week that is worth talking about, who plays on this day, and it is Bam. Because over the last week, Bam is the fourth ranked player in minus one rankings. Bam is averaging almost 60 fantasy points over the last week. That places him third. So how is he doing this and what is real about it? Well, the number one thing we look at here is blocks because last season, Bam averaged 0.8 blocks. The year before, Bam averaged 0.8 blocks. The year before, Bam averaged one block. The last four games, Bam is averaging 1.8 blocks. So he's doubling his block rate. That is a huge, huge part of what is happening. Bam did have some good block numbers to begin the season. He had six blocks in his first four games. So he was already elevating. But over his last four games... He's gone 2-3-2-0. Two, two, and zero. He hasn't had a game where he's had one block. It's been 2-2-0, 2-0-2, 3-2-0. So it's either bulk blocks or no blocks. 
what is Bam as a shot blocker? Because he's never been this guy before. He's really elevated over the last week, and that has jumped his numbers up. But how real is this? The other thing is, he's playing 37 minutes a night over the last four. That brings his average up to 35, but he was at 35 last year, 33 the year before that. And yes, their backups are putrid. Thomas Bryan is bad. Kevin Love is playing backup center minutes now. Orlando Robinson, not sure why they're not using him, but he's better than these guys. Their power for depth is thin as well. So he is just playing a ton at the moment. We're also seeing Bam's usage through the roof. He's at 28 usage for the season. And that's what that, that high load, now that might seem like a giggity, and it is. But what load is, is the stat, you can see this on, on a few different websites, but I like where it's pre- presented on Crafted NBA. Offensive load, it just means what you're doing on the offense. So you're taking shots, you're uh, generating assists, and you're creating shots for others, like a, a box creation, how many open shots you're creating for others. Bam is at the highest level of that in his career. He's in the 85th percentile on offensive load. And that's not really what you think of Bam as. So he's doing so much. His load in previous seasons, he's at 39 this season. He's never been at 39 before. He was 35 the year before that, 38 the year before that, 35 the year before that. So it's an upping there, plus an up in defensive numbers. And he's averaging 15 rebounds a game over the last um, four games. Now, again, way up. He's at 10.6 for the season, and he was at 9.2 last year. So this is not a buy low, sell high segment necessarily, but there is obviously something in this that the blocks probably don't stick. The 37 minutes might not not stick. The offensive load, it might. He might be this guy. And then the rebounds are probably going to come down as well. So that is how Bam has done it. That is how he's pushed up into the top five. He might even push into the top 20 for the season. In fact, I've got him around the 20 mark for the rest of the season. He's also shooting uh, 85% from the line over his last four games. And he's never been that good. So there's a lot of indicators that it won't stick, but this is how he's doing it. He's putting up fantastic numbers. Just not sure we're going to expect that to stick. And that is Bam Adebayo under the lens. Let's go through now and have a look at what else we need to take a look at because it's time for the stream of the day for Tuesday. I'm going to go with Bogdan Bogdanovic for 10 team leagues, especially if Trey is out. I'm going to go with Skylar Mays for 12 team leagues. He's still available. 14 team leagues, I'm going to go with a speaker, Keontae George. For 16 team leagues, while I was going to go with Nick Batum, let's just switch that for Robert Covington, who's available in 90 plus percent of leagues. So let's put Robert Covington in there instead of Batum because obviously Batum is out. I'm going to update my spreadsheet with that because, uh, yeah, I can do it on the fly. And then for points leagues for 12 teams, yes, you can use Skylar Mays, but Bismack Biombo is also in the mix there. He is still an excellent stream or an ad, honestly, wherever he's available, but he's my 12-team points stream of the day. That'll bring us now to talk um, about what's on my radar for the 10 in-season tournament games. It's the Indiana Pacers and the Sixers, the first game. Bruce Brown, a lot of people are a little bit annoyed at Brown. You didn't invest much in Brown in a draft. You picked him in round 11, pick 12. Um, He's not scoring particularly well, but he's doing little bits and pieces of everything. If you're in a 10-team league, you don't need to hold on to Bruce, but let's just see what his role is. It is relatively stable, and that's a key thing as well. Do you need to roster Brown? I think probably yes in 12-team categories, but not points. 10-team category, probably not. But I just want to see where where he can improve some of his numbers. On the six as well, I did want to watch Nick Batum, and I did want to stream Nick Batum, but I don't. But now I want to watch Robert Covington. Is he the guy going to start? Is it going to be KJ Martin? Will it be Daniel House? Will it be Ferky from Turkey? It actually could be. It could be a Korkmaz. Although Covington is yeah, playing more minutes out of any of those guys, just watch to see what Nick Nurse does there. In terms of a stream for the Pacers, we are going to look at Aaron Neesmith, who is that's what he is. He's not a 12-team rosterable guy. He is a streamable player. The second game of the day is the Miami Heat, and it is the Charlotte Hornets. For the Heat, Jaime Huckers. Two good games across the weekend, one without Lowry, one without Butler. Here is the test. What does Huckers, Huck, uh, What does Huckers' role look like in a game where Lowry and Butler both play, even though Hero is out. I expect that Duncan Robinson starts. So does Huckers play 24? Not enough for me to care. Does he still play 30? Then I do care. Does he start over Robinson? Then I absolutely care. But that's what we want to pay attention to. And for the Hornets, I want to see Mark Williams. Big matchup for him against Bam Adebayo. Are we going to see him stabilize at 28, 29 per night? Are we going to see these weird games where it goes small? Does Miles Bridges eventually return, which we don't see here? Does that mean they go small even more? Let's watch what this does for Mark and how he looks. In terms of streams, Dunk Robinson is a really good option for the Heat. And then you've got Big Dick Nick Richards as a stream there for the Hornets. On my radar for the Hawks and the Pistons, it is Jalen Johnson who played really low minutes last game. 
I don't really have an understanding of why outside of a couple of turnovers, there was no injury. Let's see how Quinn Snyder responds and what the rotation looks like. Well, for the Pistons, I want to see Kate Cunningham because his last week has been atrocious. I think he's shooting 16% from three over the last week, which brought his 36% three-point shooting down to um, 29%. Makes it look horrible. Um, His rebound numbers are down. He's getting no steals. He's been really quite poor in numerous areas. I still am not, I'm not going to write or close the book that Kate is a 40% shooter and a 29% three-point shooter, nor am I going to say that he's a 0.6 steals player. I'm very happy with his minutes, his usage, his assist numbers, his three-point volume, his free throw percentage, and his free throw attempt rate. But he needs to be better. He needs to shoot better. He needs more help in terms of spacing the floor. So let's see what he's able to do. Let's see if we get some signs of life because it was good. And last week was a disaster. And it needs to be better. In terms of streams, DeAndre Hunter is available for the Hawks. I don't love Hunter as a must-roster guy, but we look at that. And then Alec Burks for the Pistons, who is just a plus-minus god. Whenever he plays, they're better. Whenever he doesn't play, they're worse. How do they use him and Hayes and Sasa and Ivy? Was Ivy's like 10-minute role because of the illness or because Monty Williams hates him and he's scapegoating him? Shout out to DeAndre Ayton or Jay Crowder. How does that all play out? Pistons fans are going through it at the moment. Hey, you should have fired Troy Weaver three years ago. No, it's not the fans' fault, right? There's some weird stuff going on with that team, and we want to see some other stuff um, play out. What else are we looking at here? On my radar for the Spurs and the Thunder, I do want to watch the old horse, Keldon Johnson, because he's been very up and down. Last game was great. The game before that was putrid. But as a general rule, Johnson's been better. He's lowered his usage. He's increased his peripheral stats, and that does make him a 12-team guy. Let's see which direction he goes in this one. And then on the Thunder side of things, Lou Dort, who we knew the shooting and the usage would not stay, and it hasn't, predictably so. But what he is doing, which he has never done in the past, is generate massive, massive steal numbers. And that puts him on the 12-team radar. I am a little bit skeptical after watching Lou Dort for three years that despite being an excellent defender, he's never been in a position where he gets steals like this. So I'm going to be skeptical. But you know the idea on steals. You know the rule on steals. They are the most variable stat, game by game, week by week, and year on year. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that Dort could be a poor steals guy and turn into a big steals guy and then turn back into a poor steals guy next season. Happens quite a bit, actually. Happens quite a bit. In terms of streams for the Spurs, maybe it's Charlie Bassey. If he gets 15 minutes, he's at least usable in some formats. And then for the Thunder, it is uh, Kaysan Wallace. Now, the Thunder stream is very important for Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and he's probably going to be the one or only guy that you're going to have any ability to to grab or to utilize. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Start off the NBA season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if the team wins. That's it. I wouldn't recommend betting on the Wizards, or honestly on the Pistons at this point, because they lose every game, apparently. I think they've lost six in a row. But just find a team that you think is going to win, and then you get your your bonus bets. And then you can use your bonus bets on spreads, totals, player props, over-unders, futures, parlays, whatever it is you want, you can get that done on FanDuel. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and tip off the NBA season. FanDuel is also an official partner of the NFL, and don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay, let's go into the next uh, things that are on my radar or the next game that we're paying attention to here. And we're looking at the Magic and the Nets with no Fultz and no Harris. Can Cole Anthony do something? He started off the season really well and it's just lost his, lost his way. He only played 14 minutes last game with Fultz and Harris out. Is that real? Is that what we're going to do? Let's see where his value is. And then for the Nets um, with Simmons and Thomas out, Lonnie Walker, who has been shooting at an unsustainable level, but there's an opportunity for him. Now, I still don't really think that he's much more than a stream, but let's see how they utilize him in the rotation, especially at the expense of maybe Spencer Dinwiddie. In terms of streams for the Magic, there is still a lot there. There's Wagner, uh, there's Suggs if he's still available, there's Anthony, there's Anthony Black, there is Goga Badadze. I'm going to throw Wagner as a list there. And then Dorian Finney-Smith to drop down enough to be back to be a stream option. And with Simmons out again, Finney-Smith is probably going to start and therefore there is some use for him. Remember last game he played 20 minutes, it's because he got in foul trouble, not because they reduced him to 20 minutes. 
what is on my radar for the next game, which is the Dallas Mavericks and the New Orleans Pelicans. I do want to see Derek Jones Jr., who'd been pushing 30 minutes every game and then got hurt last game. He did return. But is he a 30-minute guy? Is that useful for 12s? I've added him in like one spot. But if he plays like 23 minutes and doesn't do it, he's getting cut. So let's see how it all plays out for him here. And then on the Pelicans, I want to see Zion Williamson because he's not doesn't look right. He's not scoring at the level he used to. His efficiency is way down from where it was. And the appeal of having Zion on a fantasy team was 29 points at 60 plus percent shooting. And you're getting nowhere near that, even with CJ out. Anything else you got from him, 1.5 steals or a block or um, let's say eight rebounds, all of those are pipe dream sort of things. But if you got him, it was a bonus. And now you really need them because he's not scoring enough. So let's see what's actually going on here. In terms of stream options, Derek Jones is there. And if Herb Jones is ruled out for the Pelicans, we really are looking at Dyson Daniels as the stream guy there. What is next on my radar? It is the Portland Trailblazers and the Utah Jazz. For the Blazers, I want to see Duop Wraith. Is he going to be the backup to Aiton again? Does that mean 15 minutes? That means it's useful in deeper leagues. Shout out again, ESPN and Yahoo. They've added the players they needed to add. Well done. So Wraith is a guy that we can look at in deeper formats. Well, for the Jazz, no Walker Kessler again. Is Kelly Olenek truly going to stay at 20 a night? Seems weird. But let's watch that. Because if he does it again, then he's not going to be a must-hold player. In terms of streams, well, it's always going to be Skylar Mays here for Portland. He's going to start. He's going to play big minutes. He's going to be a useful guy right across the board. And then for the Jazz, it is probably Olenek. Behind him, let's throw Abaji or, or Keontae George, actually, behind Olenek, who should be rostered regardless. But he's not, and he's available in a lot of spots. The Clippers and the Nuggets. What are we watching on the Clippers? Well, it's very obvious. We are watching Jim Harden. And we are watching what James Harden does and how he plays and how that affects Kawhi and how it affects Paul George and what they do with Russell Westbrook. That is what we're watching. We couldn't be watching it any closer. But the Nuggets, I want to watch Michael Ponder Jr. because his minutes have been sky high and he's playing really well. He started off the season with some really strong rebound numbers. So his minutes and production sort of disappear. Then it was like, oh, he's actually got a really serious ankle injury and he's just recovering from it. Okay. And now they're just pumping minutes into him. Is that because there's a little bit of a lack of trust in the bench of Peyton Watson and Julian Strouder and those guys? Maybe. We never saw the Nuggets play these guys these minutes last season. It just didn't happen. But it's happening at the moment, and that's something to watch. In terms of streams, the Clippers went very small last game. Not really sure you can do it against Jokic. So I think we'll see more Zubats out there. Not that he can really cover Jokic, but how much do you want Diabete or Tucker on him? Um, But what does that mean for Norman Powell's minutes? And then uh, who was really good last game as a stream option, but that's what we're looking at for Norm. And then for Reggie Jackson, while he's going to be the starting point guard and he has some stream appeal. What is on my radar for the Minnesota Timberwolves in a rematch against the Golden State Warriors? They just beat the Warriors the other the other day. Um, I do want to see what happens with Nas Reed, whose minutes push down a little bit, and with fully healthy McDaniel's and Anderson and Gobert and Towns, Reed is on the bubble to me. I am still rostering him, but if he's an 18 minute a night guy, he's not going to be a 12 team league player, and that's going to leave into situations where there's just not enough minutes to go around. For the Warriors, I do want to see whether Clay Thompson remains on washed watch. I think he is. Also, shout out to Andrew Wiggins' Revenge Games, the example that everyone would always give me when I would tell you that Revenge Games were, were fake and they were, well, look at Wiggins against the Wolves. Cool. Look at Wiggins against the Wolves last game. He, uh, Wiggins, cooked. I don't know what's going on there. Thompson, he doesn't look great. I think we're still holding him, but he doesn't look good. And the same goes with Chris Paul. They really need to turn it around. In terms of streams, Kyle Anderson is there for the Wolves, and Dario Saric is probably the Warriors guy that we're looking at to stream through. The Memphis Grizzlies and the LA Lakers playoff rematch. I want to watch Jaron Jackson, because to say he's been underwhelming, I think would be fair. He's not blocking the bulk shots. He's getting limited minutes at times. His shot is not falling. He's really struggling with this increased role that he has. Let's see if he's able to turn it around. Well, for the Lakers, regardless of injuries, I think Cam Reddish is going to start. And you know, what what is it? Is it is it 35 minutes or is it 26 minutes? And how does that how is that impacted by LeBron or even a Jared Vanderbilt returning? In terms of streams, Luke Kennard is available everywhere. You might get 16 with four threes. That's really useful for nearly all leagues. And then Reddish does become a stream for the Lakers as well. 
Of course, the big one is there, what happens with LeBron. In terms of two-for-ones with the Tuesday-Wednesday back-to-back combo, I don't know whether you have streaming ability on Tuesday, but you might. And if you do, these are the teams going Tuesday-Wednesday or six names that you can add to get two games for one waiver ad. We're looking at Mo Wagner. We're looking at Skylar Mays. Both probably should be on rosters. I'm um, looking at Derek Lively. Probably should be on a roster as well. Cole Anthony probably shouldn't be. Um, Goga Badadze. Uh, maybe maybe he is. And then the last one, of course, is Nick Batum. But he's out. So uh, we hope everything's all right because Nick Batum was going through some bad personal stuff, he said, that delayed his beginning in Philadelphia. He came back, he played a few games, and now it's happened again. So we hope that everything is okay here with Nick and it doesn't lead to anything more serious. But another two for one, again, we're just going to slide. Wherever you see Batum's name, let's just slide Bob Covington across into that. In terms of chunks, the next five days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Tuesday and Friday, the two usual non-stream days in that mix. So let's look at who's got the most quality games over the next five days. All of them have two. No one has three. So Kyle Lowry should be rostered. Derek Lively, Josh the Hitman Hart, very borderline to me. Kyle Anderson's very borderline. So is Derek Jones and Duncan Robertson, maybe an ad. But all of those guys in this little short period of time with two quality games over the next five days gives them a level of appeal. So let's just go through some streaming now. 10-team category league. De'Anthony Melton, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Skylar Mays, Kali Olenek, Jalen Suggs, and Kyle Lowry are all widely available players who you can stream in in a 10-team category league. For a 12-team league, we use a lower cutoff, obviously. So we're looking at Skylar Mays. We're looking at Kali Olenek. We're looking at Keontae George. We're looking at Nick Batum slash Robert Covington, Alec Burks, and Flaming Mo Wagner. For deeper leagues, who is a stream option for Tuesday? Well, we've got Keontae George, Robert Covington, Alec Burks, the painter Matisse Thibel, Luke Kennard, the duck, and the spur, Duncan Robinson. And then we go into us. I said 14 team. That was supposed to say deep leagues. My apologies. That's for 14 and, and deeper. Lastly, we look at... Oh, I did different. I didn't mean to do this one. That was 14. Now we're doing 16. There you go. An extra bonus for you. 16 team streams. Robert Covington, Matisse Thibel, Luke Kennard, legendary ESPN ghost, Jacob Gilliard. I think he's going to keep starting. Derek Jones and Bob Covington. Well, Covington's on that list twice now. Maybe it is Daniel House, another guy we can look at as a stream for those deeper formats. And then lastly, we should be in a situation where we're looking at point streams. Here we are. Bismack Biombo, Keontae George, Derek Lively, Skylar Mays, Kyle Lowry, and Kelly Olynyk. And that We'll do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app and on YouTube. Thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.